Hello and welcome to another Chromebook experience video. My name is Ben Wilkoff and what I have here is the Acer Chromebook R11. Um, it's one of the touch-based Chromebooks that we're looking at for our implementation with students and teachers in Aurora Public Schools. And so we got a preview demo unit here. Um, and I just wanted to show everyone the uh, where Chromebooks have come from. My very first Chromebook was the uh, Chromebook C7, uh, which is also from Acer. And what's perhaps most interesting about it is that it had a 250 gigabyte uh, hard drive, a disk hard drive that spun and made lots of noise and was super slow. Um, obviously, almost all of the Chromebooks since have had flash storage and things like that. Um, I did want to talk about the specs a little bit on this, so I just pulled up the uh, screen here um, and went to the actual Acer page that has the R11. Um, and there are some really interesting components of this particular uh, model, um, but I gotta say, it is very much based upon all of the things that Acer has already done um, in this space. And so when you're looking at um, these devices, you're sort of saying, all right, so I'm dealing with a uh, keyboard here that has always sort of been this chiclet style keyboard. Um, uh, with a little bit of cramping, but it has spaced out a little bit since obviously this was the uh, much smaller version. Um, so it is spaced out a little bit more um, and it makes me think, oh man, there are some, uh, a lot more things that you can do. Obviously the star of the show uh, in this particular uh, Chromebook is the ability to do uh, fully um, tablet mode or tent mode or any of the other different kinds of things that you might want to do as a student or a teacher or really anyone who's using these. And so, you know, for me, there is a lot to like about this, but it is a little bit slower. Um, when I did the uh, N22 benchmark, um, which now that you can do the, um, the Google Play Store, you can actually do some book benchmarking uh, with other Android devices. And so I got a recommendation for um, what to use to, to do a little bit of benchmarking and it goes through this whole graphic test and then it gives you a ranking. And so you can see all of the other mostly phone based uh, rankings. And so you can go through all of the iPhones, all of the, um, the different Android devices, the, the OnePlus One, all of those different things. and then there's this device. So it's the Acer Chromebook R11 and it gets a score of uh, about 60,000 almost exactly. And that is significantly below any of the most modern phones that are out there that are being tested. Now when I tested the um, Asus C302, that was actually right at uh, about 18 or 19 on here. So it was above I think it was above the iPhone SE um, and uh, a number of other uh, Android phones that were, you know, further down the list. So you can kind of guess that this is not quite the same level of, uh, of caliber as that device. Um, obviously, you do have the, the touch screen. You do have a nice webcam. Um, I really like how rugged this is. And the price is significantly less, right? So if you're looking at this and sort of choosing um, from among them, this is definitely on the lower end side, um, but it does make you think, all right, so what are the trade-offs here and how is it that we can best make them? Um, I was able to load up full games. Um, I tried out, uh, I tried out Grand Theft Auto 3, which obviously is older now, but has a lot of graphic intensive needs. And so it was still able to load that onto the Chromebook. Really interesting use of, um, of the Google Play Store. And, uh, <laughs> and it looks like it just loaded up uh, OK Google. But I find it most interesting perhaps uh, now that you have access to all of these applications, organizing them becomes so essential. So new applications that I'm using and things like that, I'm just putting here into, um, 
uh, into this drawer interface. Um, but it's really great to be able to actually have folders now that actually mean something. So when I have my video folder, it's both viewing and creating video. Um, I really liked a number of these apps that are around the creation on this device. And I had a number of people in the comments who were talking about video creation and how do we do that on a Chromebook. And so like drawing cartoons is actually sort of wireframing and um, the ability to actually sort of manipulate the individual characters on screen. It's really interesting to see just what you can do inside of the um, inside of this space. So if we want to, you know, add a stick man or a person, you know, all of these different kinds of things um, where we can here we'll add a rooster and then um, if I go back, boo boo boo. So um, each one of these various vertices we can create a new frame with um, and have them move around. And so really cool creation devices now, um, but definitely this is not um, the, the highest end. It is really sort of in the middle of the road. You can get slower Chromebooks, but of the ones that have Google Play, it's definitely on the lower end. Uh, there are so many things that you can do inside of the system now. Uh, I, I think there are really huge opportunities for a lot of our education apps um, to really take hold, uh, but we have to start testing these things out. We have to start pushing them. And when I look at the comparison of the benchmarks, I look at the comparison of what it is that you can do with these individual devices, uh, it makes me think that we need to have kind of a concerted effort and sort of say, what is it that you want to see these uh, new machines do, these touch-based Chromebooks. So if you have something that you'd like me to try on any of the touch-based Chromebooks for your classroom use, for your personal use, for your business use case, uh, would love to test those out and actually create um, a community of folks that are doing that. Um, and there's obviously a community that already exists for this kind of stuff, but I'd love to engage in that because we do have the ability to, um, you know, make all of these new use cases uh, for the touch-based Chromebooks. And so just as a, a sort of a final word on this particular Chromebook and, and what it has, so we do have uh, this old style power uh, brick. Um, so it's this very much an AC adapter that Acer has been using for a very long time. It sort of snaps in here to charge. Um, it's not my favorite that it's not USB-C. I, I would have really loved for them to do that, but then they would have probably lost a lot of the other ports on here. So we do have an HDMI port. We do have a USB 3 um, uh, port, but the traditional setup for uh, the USB configuration. We have a full-size SD card slot, um, which is not something you notice very often. We have the lock uh, on this side that you can attach it to. But we have a USB 2 uh, as well as the uh, as well as the headphone jack and the power button on the side, so it's just really interesting that uh, Acer has decided. You know, with this one, we're not going to upgrade everything. We're not going to put it to the top of the line. We want it to be a touch-based Chromebook. We want it to have the Google Play Store out of the box. But we don't necessarily want all of the other bells and whistles that Asus and Samsung are doing for their top of the line. So hopefully this was useful to you. Let me know what questions you have about this model or any of the other models that we're taking a look at uh, because there's a really important conversation to be starting. Thanks so much for watching.